Hello everyone! Let me tell you something about the audio system in the Godot engine. As an illustrative example, I will use our point-and-click adventure game Whispers of Prague. If you've seen my Space Shooter tutorial or read the book on game development in Godot 4, links to both resources should be in the video description. You should already have the basic information. Nevertheless, it certainly won't hurt if I start with a brief introduction. So, Godot's audio system offers a great flexibility, allowing us to create multiple channels known as buses, which serve as pathways for sound output. Through code, we can control these buses. We can adjust their volume settings, add sound effects, or even disable them to mute the respective channel entirely. Let me open the game project to demonstrate. So where is Godot? Right here. Let's open it and open the game I mentioned. Let's wait a couple of seconds. Come on, seems to be slower today. Okay, here it goes. Good. So, at the bottom of the Godot editor, we see the audio tab. Clicking on it reveals the current settings of the audio mixer. If you're starting with an empty project, you'll only see the master bus which must be always be present and cannot be deleted. If I click these three dots, we can see that delete bus is disabled. However, we would like to create separate controls for background music, sound effects such as door opening, fountain splashing, etc. and voiceovers for individual characters in the game. That's why, as you can see here, we've created special audio buses. This is done using the Add Bus button, and each such element has a name for easy identification, music, SFX, and speech. Let's take a look at the control elements that each bus contains. At the top, we have the letters S, M, and B, which are abbreviations for Solo, Mute, and Bypass. If we click on Solo, all other channels will be muted, and we will only hear this one. Mute has the opposite effect. The selected channel will be turned off, and we will hear only the others. Finally, Bypass allows us to deactivate effects that we can add using the Add Effect element, which we will get to shortly. If a channel has Bypass active, we will hear only the clean sound, regardless of one of more effects assigned to the channel. This is very useful for various debugging purposes. By the way, all these switches can be applied to multiple channels simultaneously. For example, if we want to only, only two of them to play, we set solo on both. The entire mixer setup can be saved as a resource allowing for easy switching if we create multiple layouts or want to reuse them in other projects later on. In our game, we have only one, and it's saved under... Uh, where is it? Here. Under the standard name defaultbuslayout.trs. If we want, we can directly set the volume of each channel using these faders. However, we won't use them because we want the player to be able to control the mixer directly in the game. We will get to that as well. Now, let me say a few words about the mentioned add effect element. When we click on it, we see a list of all the effect that Godot has prepared for us and it includes practically everything we need for regular sound work. You might remember how I demonstrated the use of the Spectrum Analyzer effect in one of the previous videos. If not, I highly recommend checking it out. The link should be in the description as well. The last thing I didn't mention is the audio bus routing, 
which we can see at the very bottom. In the default setup, all channels are routed to the master bus, which is exactly what we want. However, if we were to require more complex audio signal processing, we have the option, for example, to add a special channel for music in a church that requires a reverb. We can then route such a channel to the music bus to utilize the configured volume for all music. Let me show you. So I click add bus. We have a new bus here. Let's call it, for example, a reverb. And to this bus, we will add the reverb effect. There it is. And route it to the music bus. And that's exactly what we wanted. And how do we use these channels in the game? Let me switch to the code, OK. And when we look at it, we can see that during the game initializations in the ready function, the function sound manager in its sound system is called. In this function, individual audio buses are searched for by their names to save the index into variables, which are later used in other functions, like here for setting the volume. Similarly, we set the previously stored or default volume values for all channels in this kind of code. We will get to that in a moment. All right, that should be enough for an introduction. Let's run the game and demonstrate how we control individual channels. Okay, right on the initial screen, we have settings, which include four sliders, master volume and the volume of three separate channels. If you move any of them, the change is immediately reflected, as we can hear in case of music. We will demonstrate in the code how this is done. So I go back, exit the game. And let me open the settings scene. Here it is. I'll center it. So each of these sliders, one, two, three, four, uh, send a value change signal. Let's go to signal and here it is. Uh, when the position changes for these signals, we have created callback functions in the script. Let's switch to the script and uh, sorry, this is not the script. Here it is. Okay, and scroll down to the callback functions. There should be it. Okay, so um, what is uh, what these functions do? Each of these functions saves the current position of the slider to the options file, which we use to preserve and reload all game settings. It is uh, this line. Subsequently. It calls a function in the sound manager uh, class, which is responsible for adjusting the volume of the respective audio bus. Let's take a look at it. Uh, okay, I can switch here back. So here we are calling the audio server set bus volume db function for a specific audio bus. Please note that we convert the slider value, which is in the range from zero to one, using the Godot function linear to db. This is because the audio bus operates on a decibel or a logarithmic scale. So a conversion is necessary to set the resulting volume correctly. By the way, our class, or actually the scene sound manager, is used as an autoload resource, ensuring that we can access it from anywhere in the code throughout the game. We can see it in the project settings. Project settings, auto load. There is uh, several. There are several um, several resources, and one of them is Sound Manager, and it is mapped to the name uh, Sound Manager, which is exactly how we use it in the code. For example, right here. However, how do we ensure that the sound is sent to the correct audio bus? Let's take another look at the Sound Manager scene. I'll open it here and click on some uh, audio stream player notes, like this one. In the inspector, we can see that each one has the bus property set to the respective channel. So the speech player using the speech uh, channel, this is for example a sound effect, or I should have some kind of short music here, 
which is routed to music. Uh, by the way, if your game uses rapidly repeating identical sounds such as uh, machine gun fire, you've probably wondered how to ensure that Godot can play sounds without interrupting each other. This was a bit of a challenge in Godot 3, where it was necessary to dynamically create instances of the audio stream player uh, class and release these instances from memory using Q3 after playing the sound. Fortunately, this is handled much more elegantly in Godot 4, as the audio stream player now includes the max polyphony property. If we set it to sufficiently high value, for example to handle 10 shots in a rapid sequence, Godot takes care of the correct playback automatically. And that's almost everything. Finally, let's showcase some of the audio effects that we can set for a selected audio bus. I will run the game again and jump to the location in the church where the player will eventually arrive after a certain period. So let's find the main scene, here it is, and I need to set up a shortcut, uh, church, let's start. So, as we know, a reverb would be suitable in the church to enhance the atmosphere of a space with significant sound reflections. We will stop the game and add reverb to the music bus. Let's get out of it. Okay, so let's switch back to the audio tab and here we have the music bus. We will add reverb and start it again. Okay, can you hear that reverb? I think the result is very similar to the sound in a church. We can further adjust this effect in the inspector if we want to fine-tune some parameters. Let's play a bit more of that. By the way, it's not happening right now, but during my previous experiments I could hear occasional crackling in the music. That was because due to the reverb the audio signal reaches levels higher than the maximum allowed values, causing a phenomenon known as clipping. To prevent this, we would need to lower the volume of the original music or process it first with another effect such as a compressor or a limiter. This would be a bit more advanced technique, so at least we'll remember that um, even with sound effects it's crucial not to overdo it and every effect needs to be uh, tested th quite thoroughly before implementing it in the game. In case we need to activate audio effects only in specific situations, we have the option to control them directly from the code. So I will switch back to Sound Manager and just briefly show it. So we can access a specific effect using this function, audio server, get bus effect, here it is, and it takes parameters, uh, bus index and effect index, which means we would be using the first bus uh, right here, uh, master, so if we want to work with music, it would be one actually, and there is only one effect, so it has the index zero, this is correct. Or we can enable and dis or disable it using this function, audio server, uh, what was that set? Bus effect enabled again with a bus index and effect index. So this way we would, for example, when the play and of course true or false, sorry, enable disabled. So if the players enter the church, we would call this function to enable the reverb. Once uh, the player leaves the church, we would call it again with parameter false to disable it. Easy. So I will just delete these two lines 
end. Let's, for example, open it again, click the reverb, and here we can see how to change parameters of the reverb. For instance, if we think that the room size is not correct, we can increase it to the maximum or add more uh, wet sound, which is the, the reverb effect actually. Now, if we start again, it could be a little bit different. I'm not sure. Yeah, I guess it is probably not uh, so obvious, but if I turn up the volume, it would be um, it would be just we could hear it much better. By the way, have you noticed this god rays? It's a very nice visual effect that we achieve using a shader and dust particles. Perhaps creating a separate tutorial for such a shader would be worthwhile as it certainly has a lot of applications. Let's leave the game. And exit. And that's really everything for today. Take care and I will see you in the next video.